Welcome everyone to the September 15th in County uh, Board of Education Special Call Meeting. Uh, first time of this roll call, Board Member Smith. Here. Board Member Evans. Here. Board Member Cooper. Here. I'm here and Board Member Mattis is on the way. Next time, it's taking the lead. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Never have a moment of silence. Tennessee County School District values, beliefs, and goals are visions we are meant to see, where we ensure every student can reach on a pathway to a successful future in academia, military, or career. Our mission is empowering future generations to be productive and successful in the global economy through community collaboration, creative thinking, instructional rigor, and relevance in order to improve the quality of life for all. Our values are strong work ethic, reliability, positive focus, determination. From staff, parents, students, and the community. Foundation for successful transition for a solid future, self worth, everyone is valued, compassion, parent involvement, attendance, and school pride. Our core beliefs a good education will pull kids out of poverty and make an impact in our community. Teachers and administrators should passionately teach fundamentals while instilling morals and ethics. Every Menifee County student can learn at a higher level. Personalized education to meet the learning needs of students. Our goals by 2023, all students will graduate prepared for transitions on a pathway to a successful future in academia, military, or career. <clears throat> by 2023, the attendance rate will increase to 96%. By 2023, the district will meet the Kentucky Department of Education's measurement of interim progress for proficiency in reading and in math. And by 2023, Minifee County School District will have a virtual learning lab and central office facility. I make a motion to adopt the agenda. They have a second. Second. All those in favor of adopting the agenda, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Student and staff recognition. Once again, we'd like to commend all of our staff as well as our students. They've worked very diligently during the pandemic. Uh, we have uh, several of our staff members now that have been vaccinated, and uh, we're probably up over 85% of our staff as far as certified and vaccinated. Probably around 72 to 73 percent of all staff members have been vaccinated. I want to commend our bus drivers, cooks, custodians, all of our technology folks going above and beyond, teacher staff of everyone working hard to ensure that kids are getting a quality education. Uh, if you look at your balance sheet, uh, general fund is 2.3 million. Um, Fund two is a negative 177,000. At the end of September, we'll be getting that quarterly reimbursement that will help that account. Fund 21 is 35,000. That is the school's money here at the district level. Fund 25 is student activity. That's 43,000. Fund 31, which is your capital outlay, has 138,000. Fund 32, which is your nickel money, has 395,000. All that's left of your bond money is 517,000. We're almost done. So close. <laughs> Um, your debt service has a negative 167. That's just the journal entries I usually do in the middle of the year. And then your food service is at 134,000. So I hope you balance your food service. Yep. Any questions or discussion? Could we approve the balance sheet? I'll second. I will say we can talk to you now. Uh, uh, monthly financial report. Um, if you look on page five, <laughs> anyway, if you look on page five, uh, year to date we're at three million. Last year, this period, we were at two million. Uh, the significant increase is our flood money that we received for our flood insurance, which was approximately with everything that we've received so far is 759,000, which left our contingency at a very healthy 1.6 million. I'll make a motion for the monthly financial report. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, bank reconciliation. Bank reconciliation. We did have a little wonky uh, head reverse two payrolls because of time here. What's on there? We have a reconcile balance of $373,046 and then $0.20 cents for reconcile balance. So 
one little sentence. Uh, wait, <laughs> that I know. Sure We're down the pennies, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, there's nothing worse than being off a penny or a five hundred dollars. Doesn't matter. Because when you're an accountant, it's just you're chasing it. Well, I'll put it in for you. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> I'll make a motion. We uh, approve the bank resolution. I'll second. All those in favor? No. Uh -huh. Okay. Cash flow statement. Okay. Can you look at your cash flow statement? I thought this. And I just think until we get rid of all that bond stuff in in the cash flow statement, it's going to look funky to do this. I've got us down to, it looks like about the end of this year, we'll be at 1.1 in the general fund and 1.5 overall, not including any bond money. When I do the uh, general fund one, I've got us projected <coughs> at, sorry, 2.1, but. We've also, the flood money, we've decided on some things that we want to do. So I don't expect that to stay. At least that'll, stay that'll, 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 that'll go that'll back go. towards kids and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But still, if you can take that out, you're at 1.23 mm -hmm. on, on the general fund side. So yeah. you're still conservative. Mm -hmm. yep. That makes me happy. I'm making a motion to approve. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the cash flow statement. I'll take it. All those in favor, six months and a half. Uh, PDS they report records for CPE I'm going to try to roll all the information into one big report here, if that's okay. Uh, start with our, it, it's an update on our enrollment, quarantine, and uh, virtual learning students. So we currently have 984 students enrolled in the district, uh, 65 students in quarantine, two staff members in quarantine, and 204 students on virtual learning. And that does include our 10 students at uh, Nancy County, which is Joshua. Um, and our current attendance rate is 86.38, uh, which of course affected by our quarantine currently. Um, even though it's after the fact that those uh, absence will be excused, it does still impact our attendance rate. Um, of course, driving by, if you're all the, I'm sorry. Sorry, if we pull them out, what's the, what's the rate? It changes, and I can say right now that we have 65 students in quarantine. So that's going to have a pretty huge impact on our numbers. If we talk about 65 students out of, you know, a little under a thousand students, yeah, I mean, it's going it's to be back up to where, you know, where we're a little more accustomed to being. Closer to 90. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> A little bit about facilities. If you guys are driving by, I don't have to say anything about the progress that uh, <laughs> the old man injury. Finally, I'll get it. Absolutely. They're, they're moving very quickly on that. Um, you'll see lots of items on the board agenda today about the greenhouse, um, uh, about the board office and virtual learning lab. So, all those things are in the works also. Um, as far as preschool, we have 16 preschool students, and a Head Start is fully utilized. We have 72 total Head Start preschool. Um, students. The playground is almost completely taken down by the county, and a new playground will be installed once the old one's gone. And um, Mr. Kincaid and Special Education Department are working on December 1 child count. Our FMD teachers are participating in a new teacher cadre with uh, KDC, it's a, a co op that we work with pretty frequently. And um, our schools are working really hard getting their MTSS up and going. Everything's in full swing, and all of the schools have established teams, and they've had their first meeting. Um, they've had a chance to review data, and uh, we feel very good about the direction that that program is headed. Um, the title program grant consolidation application has been submitted, and we're making some revisions um, to that application now. We're also planning to apply for a mathematics achievement fund grant. It's going to give us a lot of support in math. That's definitely needed. Um, it's going to be $62,000 and training and resources for four years. Uh, so it's a great program. Mr. Kincaid and I did a really quick text session um, about the grant just a few minutes ago, and that there's a lot of promising information that's gonna help us out with uh, our, our current math data. Uh, 21st century is in week two of the program, serving approximately 80 students, five days a week after school uh, in grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, we tend to get more math training, and third through 11th grade math teachers have all participated and are getting prepared to start utilizing that in their classrooms. And assessment data has been verified with anticipated public release for the end of September. So uh, we anticipate being able to share that with everyone in the coming weeks. 
Um, CTE administration, administrative teams have completed test training. FBLA and HOSA student organizations are active. Um, officer elections have been completed and project development underway. Our fall advisory committee meetings are tentatively scheduled for November 16th. And um, so as I already mentioned, the greenhouse and um, ag shop to uh, the, the addition of the ag harvest container. And the gifted and talented team is going to be holding a parent advisory meeting um, to look at needs assessment in October. And that date will be shared with you guys once we get a little bit closer. We're also making plans to begin our Elliott walkthrough and uh, instructional rounds. And our administrative team has uh, completed part of that, that training uh, with the rest of it coming up in the next couple. Questions? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll turn to the we just all right, all right, all right, okay. That was facilities, and yeah, that was everything. Yeah, all right, uh, 10 items. Uh, this is uh, of course, there's a lot of them 27, but a lot of them ties into a lot of the same things that they've already went through. Uh, all the agreements and so forth have been reviewed with the board attorney, uh, so all those are meeting everything. I know there's a date or two that's wrong with the PDF, but we'll take it to 2021 when those come through, but uh. Bus garage lease agreement, we'll be looking at entering into an agreement with uh, Benny Ledford up at the uh, uh, facility up at the end of 746 to start moving our transportation needs up that way. This kind of gives us more centralized location as well as uh, and every time we're going to take a bus to Maine, you know, you're looking at $10, $15 worth of diesel fuel, whereas the buses are already going to be up in that area and they'll be meeting those needs there. So uh, we'll be, and plus it's uh, a little bit cheaper for us too. So, uh, so that's a pretty win-win situation. Uh, for the current Menifee, well, I don't know if it's not current, but the Menifee Elementary, what's left will be uh, Walker Construction Materials. Of course, they'll be widening 460, and they have asked to utilize that piece of property there as a staging area for construction equipment and holding materials. And uh, so we would be entering into agreement that's been reviewed by the board attorney. And then also there may be some things on down the road for that property that they might want to assist us with that. So. Uh, I'll keep you updated with that, but uh, one of the main things we'll be looking for is to keep our high school cafeteria from getting flooded. And, and once we get our new central office built, that should get us all out of the flood zone. And then there'll be some other future projects that hopefully will be coming along with this area down here. Uh, you know, I don't know what it may be yet, the soccer field track, whatever, but hopefully we'll get that on down the road. Um, other things, uh, residential construction manager agreement with the board office. Architect agreement with Greenhouse and Board Office. Uh, the greenhouse up here above the high school was already pretty much equipped. Uh, Electricity is already there. They're putting a pole in as we speak right now. Also, there's a gas line already in the back of this building, and water will be, uh, we've already paid the fee of $1,025 for the water to it. Container unit will be the first six parking spots there, and then the greenhouse will go up in the gravel surface uh, uh, where it was originally supposed to go. Probably going to be in the neighborhood of around $100,000 for, for that. But what I'm more, I'm really excited about is getting that container unit set up for that harvest. So that will be set up by the 31st of next month. And hopefully, the greenhouse will be up and running by. I'm going to shoot for March. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed with that. But we'll be utilizing a lot of that flood money for that and, and uh, the things that our kids really need. Plus, we'll, we'll be surplusing the greenhouse down here. Uh, it's getting quite a bit of age on it. And, I think when they looked at moving it the last time, Ms. Smith may have been on the board. I don't know if expensive was or not, but it was around $55,000 to take it down and move it. That's because of the glass panes, the way that they fit in the structure. And Fleming County just recently built a brand new one for $72,000. So it kind of makes sense to get a new one instead of doing the old one. But, uh, of course, the schematic design of the board office, we all have an opportunity to look at those. Beautiful facility. And hopefully we can be getting started on that thing. Uh, Sooner than later. Uh, also, they'll be entering into an agreement with the geotech firm uh, based on the architect recommendation. They're supposed to have those submitted by tomorrow. Also, be utilizing Compass Municipal Advisors as a fiscal agent for the new board office. It's about a $2 million project and substantial savings from our previous fiscal agent of probably about half the money to get it bonded. We can go with it. If we don't like it. We can always switch back again on down the road. So, uh, uh, surplus playground equipment, the track storage building down the current Minifee Elementary building. Uh, also, the greenhouse. Uh, we'll also be removing some trees up here above the high school. Uh, there wasn't any sense putting a new, new greenhouse up there and then have potentially of having 
oak tree fall over on it uh, after we first got it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so anyway, uh, you'll be seeing some tree removal there sooner than later. Uh, revised PG1 for this. This is just a uh, KDE uh, getting there, all the money and stuff being finalized with it. Uh, extra service pay schedule. Uh, of course, our tech folks, we, we've asked a lot out of our tech folks in the last little bit. We're so appreciative of them. Uh, both of them here tonight. And uh, we've also got, got you. Oh, we've also got, I'm, I'm talking to Ms. Martin. Uh, <laughs> transportation, we'll also, our transportation director is actually driving a full time bus route. So we're trying to compensate him a little bit more for doing that. Still a saving for the district when we come in, Mr. McNair, for doing that. Uh, emergency certification for three teachers. And the good thing that I can say about those emergency certifications is that they all three will be certified at the end of the year. Is that correct? So all of them either oh, so they're all they have certification. Mm -hmm. uh, one will have a certification in December. They'll be completing classes, uh, but they're all all on board to have their degrees in the MAT program completed. Oh, that's good. Uh, the Constitution takes prayer, just uh, it's uh, thing that's required for the, for, for the district, and the rest of them are just essential uh, uh, fundraisers uh, and grant applications. And then the last thing that I want to mention is we did amend our COVID 19 reopening plan. And as of right now, with the quarantine guidelines that are set forth by CDC uh, and the masking requirements, we feel like it was best. Uh, and I went ahead and incorporated this on Monday. Then we will continue with universal masking until we get to the point in the district to where we're either back to either yellow or green status. And, and I'm not just saying for one day, but I'm right. talking that we feel it's safe and secure uh, for our students and staff. Uh, and then the other one is uh, KDE approved a $100 uh, uh, incentive for our vaccinated uh, staff members. And uh, that'll be part of the vaccinated staff members. That $100 will be part of the December 1st extra. <clears throat> Uh, stipend or, or extra service that we approved at the last board meeting uh, for those that are helping us continue in person learning. And uh, other than that, I'm very appreciative. Uh, have purchased a new van. Uh, you'll see a blue van sitting by the office. Uh, the last one was in the flood. Uh, we did rather well off that van. Uh, we gave $19,000 for it. Received $31,000 in flood insurance. I declared it an emergency that way because vans are hard to come by right now. We're in desperate need of them. And we purchased it, uh, I think the sticker on it was around 46000 and we got it for 39 seats. So we essentially have a brand new van and have about $27,000. Uh, and I, I sound I, like a rose. I, 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 I commend this market for that. And also, we've just placed an order for, uh, we, we have a need to. Uh, some of our roads and so forth need for a four wheel drive, so we have placed an order for a new SUV, and those will not be in until who knows when. Yeah, but those... then we will, our 2012 van now has 175,000 miles on it, and if we're going to transport kids out in those, then I want to make sure that we're transporting them. You know, when we've got three or four kids going to FFA camp or whatever, I want to make sure they're transported. And that's like contract Yes. If you have any, don't have any questions, that's kind of what we have. Make a motion to approve the consent items with the exception of item number six, which I personally have to abstain from. I think. All in favor of approving the consent item six, I have to abstain from. Aye. Motion carried. Approve 2021-2022 working budget. While Ms. Bartley's pulling that up, uh, of course, it's required that we do have a working budget. We've already looked at a draft budget back in January. <clears throat> We've looked at a tentative budget in May, and now really a lot of the budget that you're seeing is based upon those cash flow projections and your balance sheets that you already have in the past. But uh, she'll go through that with you. If you have any questions, please let her know. Uh, we have about 11% uh, is our local taxes, 3% is utilities. C, uh, of course, is our 53%. Now, if you notice, sale or loss, we've got eight hundred twenty-two thousand in that, which is about eight point six percent. Ms. Barry, let me let me just talk to you a little bit about C. The good news from the special session: we will be funded on the 2018-2019 school year. So I know there was a conversation a moment ago about eighty-six percent attendance. We want our kids in school. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But also, we realize that all the quarantines and things of that nature, we will be funded on 2018-2019 which means we'll be funded on around 913 kids. When we ran our number, even though our enrollment is actually up in Menifee County at 980 students, that's actually an increase from 965 last year. 
but still at the same time, we started losing our attendance percentage, which was around 93, 94%. Uh, that made it, you know, makes a substantial difference that eight or nine percent attendance to us. So we're very thankful for the special session to get the funding for 2018 2019. Uh, you also notice that almost 13 percent is our beginning balance there. Now, that will be a little bit different when we get our audited AFR in, and I'll adjust and add that to uh, contingency when I get it. So if you look over here at the um, I don't want you to feel too proud. Okay, even if it is, you see that our salaries and our employee benefits together only make up 60%. But what you have to understand is that we have put a lot of our salaries into our ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 funds in order to, <coughs> so we increase, to, increase, one out of other areas too, so. to increase our general fund so that we're prepared in the future. Because I really feel like we have to prepare for declining attendance, declining well, enrollment. The money flows going to stop sometime. We all know that there's going to be maybe a major cut in seek at one point or some, you know, something major to come along. And we are making preparations for that. I mean, I've and seen I know it happen you, before when we didn't have a pandemic going on. And I know when you see a, a lot on Facebook, you know, we're hiring a lot of folks. Yes, we are hiring a lot of folks, but those are based upon grant money and things of that nature. So uh, we spend a lot of time. But also through attrition and so forth. and. And with consolidation of the school, your payroll really hadn't went up much more than what it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. But we have, we've been really cautious on, on where we put money and how it's affected by grants and that kind of thing. And we've spent a lot of discussion with the in instructions about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the only other big thing that we got is we should have as much maintenance that we got, and most of it is put into our contingency. So we're about 1.2 right now in contingency. Yeah, in. after I finished the working budget, went back through, mm -hmm. added all the loss, and then kind of the things that Mr. Spencer plans on, or we all plan on mm -hmm. uh, putting toward the, the flood loss money. I know I see him in the email as soon as I got the flood loss money, and then he's still on vacation. <laughs> Here's what I want to do with it. And he's like, Lori, stop. I got to deal with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, we are putting a new security fence around the Menifee Central, so we don't have a fence all the way around it now. Yeah. It's a black fence, so that's one of the things. That's seventy-four thousand yeah. uh, dollars. You know, the uh, greenhouse is a hundred thousand dollars. So those are things that we really needed right. that we should have had. You know, long time. A long time. well, and those are projects that you know maybe took the back burner on uh, other things when we had to do, especially student services and stuff. So right. we're having that money come in, we can do some extra things. So that's yeah. great. That and I will say, some, we, like you know, that. on the board that you had, you know, when you're on the board, you all did things along to where the utilities are up there. You know, the gas lines right in here behind this building. So mm -hmm. there are there is some prior planning. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was actually done before I got on. We were starting this well, we'll give, we'll when give. I started, so that's very exciting. <laughs> But Any yeah, questions this, on the working budget? No, I think I think it looks great. I'm really excited about 1.2 contingency. That really makes a difference. You know what that And I know like. she's so conservative to start with. So <laughs> so when that number's like that, you know, see, I get giddy almost because I know it's going to be higher than that because she's just like me. She's super conservative when she does her numbers. So, so yeah, that really makes a difference. I know. I think you need to. Anytime you can, you know, show me a healthy contingency and I, you're projecting the year to end with a million or more papers, good to go. I make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 working budget. I'll second. Any questions for folks in that? Uh-huh. Motion carried. Personnel no speech. All right. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Mr. Clemens will fix me up here next week. <laughs> District-wide substitute, Ashley Peel. Peel. Uh, Judy Runyon and Billy Spencer substitutes. Murphy County High School hiring a Frankie Spencer alternative special education. David McKinney social studies. <coughs> Murphy Central and Nicole Center with the Cook Lake resignation. Sabrina Johnson. Zero retirements and zero transfers. Any questions? Okay. Once again, just want to commend uh, uh, all of our folks working, CAP, uh, Mr. Golden, community, out really working for us, getting the items uh, for the school district. So, once again, YFC and FRYC, I know our Sleep Dreams program. Uh, I think that Mrs. Hill informed me, and maybe 
we record number of uh, beds that have been purchased through that program this year. So she was telling me about actually, it. Actually, yeah. I don't know the number, but it's that. I mean, it's great. She had, uh, when I spoke to her a few weeks ago, she had 45, I think, beds before she even really I put think, serious inquiries out. I think we're well into the 50s. Yeah, she's more. doing well with that one. So. Very proud of that. Mm -hmm. well, well needed. I just want to take the scripture. Okay, I spoke to earlier. Uh, our MTSS process is half started at the high school. We call those C classes. B stands for focused educational experience. Uh, the purpose of those classes is it helps target student academic needs, and we base those on uh, case case twenty one ACT cert tests. The, the data that we have collected. But she spoke to that this time. Uh, our juniors and seniors are having the opportunity to go to Moorhead next week for uh, college university visits. There's going to be over forty colleges uh, present at Moorhead that our juniors and seniors will be able to talk. To. That's an opportunity they're going to have next week. Talent Search and Upward Bound programs have started. Talent Search currently uh, services 78 of our students, and Upward Bound has six to 10. And both of those entities have been in our building this week doing more recruitment there. Gear Up is planning for our Gear Up grant. They're planning a Gear Up week next week, like almost like a spirit week. And Mr. Atkins and Mr. Perkins are planning a whole week with different nations dressed up and do different fun activities. Oh, so we're looking for that. It's going to That's be more normal school. It's going to be posted the towards the end of this week. Uh, FFA attended the back to school. They had a back to school bash last week, and then they attended the FFA camp this weekend. And then right this up, uh, the conference allowed our students to go to uh, participate in workshops that would help them come back here and better our program. And then our allied health and FLA, CTE pathways, those teachers participated in specific uh, trainings and conferences and for their areas on Friday. They did that last week. <laughs> Boys soccer swept the district for the first time ever. They beat Bath, Bloomingham, Ryan County. They're, they're continuing on in all A. That is coming up, and then we also host the soccer district tournament this year for the boys. Volleyball got their first win of the year last night, and to make it even better, it was against Bath County. So <laughs> volleyball beat Bath last night. Uh, I do know that our arts humanities teachers, band teacher, um, technology teacher, art teacher, they reached out to, to Miss Manis about the community theater group to help in any way possible with that. Technology is looking forward to. Aiding any way they can in video recording and things like that. Um, I know that the art teacher reached out about painting any props or any design things, and and Mr. Black, our band teacher, had reached out to talk about any possible uh, help they can do with any things that some of them can do. And then we have started receiving some sort of uh, award donations. As soon as we get to a, a certain point, then we'll loan out to them. Students will get it for free, free admission to all of our efforts. information about free to athletic events. What's that? So if you're last meeting, I was at to talk about the restore the roar donation. Uh -huh. um, our okay. reading interventionists have written that letter. So we've been handing that out to businesses. And when we reach a, a certain amount, every Menifee County student, the, the purpose of the donation is to cover their admission into our into the high school athletic events. So every Menifee County student will uh, be able to get into the that's the restore the restore the pride trying to get people back in the game. I just that's no, sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Thank you. Mr. King Kate, did you have anything you want to add? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Good. Uh start back to Nancy, any questions on that? Uh, high school minutes uh, should be posted on line will be if we're not and uh, Minifee Central had their first SBL meeting uh, this past couple weeks and uh, all of our site based council members are trained and Minifee Central will be on your agenda next month for having the first approved minutes. It may potentially be November, depends on their meeting date. Uh, just want to keep you up to date. There's just a flyer in your board agenda. Uh, if you have any questions on that, no really no different than what Board Attorney shared with you last month, but a lot of the companies now are starting to file bankrupt, and we'll see what happens. Communication sharing.
the only thing that we didn't go over uh, with our COVID uh, mitigation strategy, we are hosting and we had our first vaccine uh, for students last Friday. We had a total of 15 students that were vaccinated. Three additional staff members were vaccinated. And uh, we've got another vaccination clinic scheduled for this Friday. Uh, this is all through St. Clair. I want to thank Mr. Wolf's uh, wife, Courtney, and St. Clair for participating with that. And uh, once again, this Friday, it's on our website. Uh, we encourage, I, I just encourage everyone to try to get back. Is it going to be at the high school again? It'll be at uh, Memphis Central. Memphis Central. Memphis Central. Memphis Central. Okay. Memphis up here. Awesome. Awesome. And we, and do we know how many students? Um, you said 15? Is that what you said? We have 15 that were vaccinated on Friday. Mm -hmm. We're still working on getting our actual numbers. Mm -hmm. And what that does is once they have received the vaccination, it helps us with the quarantine process because yeah. once they've been vaccinated, unless a you know, medical provider or, or Department of Health or the Health Department or a school district, you know, they don't have to quarantine. You know, I'm just protocol. curious since we have that number, if we have the number of we'll, students we'll, we'll total have, at all. We can try to find yeah. that out for you. I'm just curious, yeah. you know, how many that we have. We're working on trying to get that number. We encourage our parents to let us know mm -hmm. because that way if we call you and say I'm quarantined, then it helps Ms. Pelfrey and Ms. Mean eliminate that need. There's actually a survey out there. So oh, is that awesome. Any parents who want to get on there, give us that information. That's very helpful. Okay, and I'll pass that along. And, and, and just for our records, so that way we'll make the right questions. Okay, great. Be great. I would just encourage as many people as can to get vaccinated. I mean, it's uh, we're getting to the point to where the more people we have vaccinated, the easier everything is, and, and it just uh, it makes it uh, helps us helps us to hopefully get to that herd immunity and where we can move forward with COVID, get back to a regular school day. If anybody has any questions, I mean. I'm more than willing to answer, you know, concerns. Um, that um, come up. I, I know that there's a lot of false information out there. Um, I mean, I could say more than once that I haven't had any of my patients die of getting the vaccine, and I've had a lot of people die from getting COVID. Um, so, you know, sometimes seeing the forest for the trees, but if there's real questions, I will set aside time to do real answers and, um, and, and go through any cases and points that have concerns if, if we need to set up a meeting, anything that will help people be comfortable with the choice of being vaccinated. I've had co workers that maybe they got vaccinated and their wife didn't. She got died. One, he didn't even have any symptoms. There's a hundred stories more than people. It just affects people different ways. You know, you can, get, you can be fortunate or you can be unfortunate. You know, several folks that just, I just recommend everybody get vaccinated. I mean, just, to me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. And I was glad to see that we made it past the 40% mark, which is saying something because we had, we had been hanging at the 25% mark for vaccination for a very long time. So 40% is not near enough to protect our children, protect our community, to um, mm -hmm. keep us from going to the funeral home to keep us from going to the hospital and, and waiting hours and, and the number of worries. And um, and I guess we're running out of monoclonal antibodies. So the one thing we've been using to um, mitigate severe illness is is all of a sudden deeply cut. And, and we felt this for several days coming. Like we would schedule somebody and they'd say, well, let us reschedule them tomorrow. For their monoclonal antibodies, and they say, Are they doing okay? Can we reschedule them tomorrow? So, I've noticed that that can was kicked down the road a couple of times during the week, not really knowing whether it was a staffing issue or anything like that. And then, I guess as of today, HHS has stopped all distribution of monoclonal antibodies until the state submit a plan to effectively distribute them. And that just freezes my soul. <laughs> I mean, it's the one thing we've got if you're not vaccinated to save you, and, and we just have it right now. So, vaccine on, my friend. And, and, and the clinics at the schools, if you just call, uh, you know, it's a goal for anyone. We'll try to make it happen for them. I mean, if, I, if we have to go to Moorhead to get more vaccines on that day, we'll go get them. So, what was just that make day? sure that you call the school first to, to schedule. What were those dates again? It's this Friday, Manatee Central from 9 to 11. 
high school from 11 to noon to 2. Just make sure that you call in advance. That way we can make sure that we get enough. So this Friday is in two days. She needs to know, two she days needs to know. by Thursday because she can have them ready for Friday. Yeah, so if you can let her know about tomorrow, close the business. That way she can bring them with her. Or go get them Friday morning. The way I look at it, every vaccine we can get in this county, the better off we are. We actually, she came last week with 18 and needed more. We had more people show up than what, you know, what, what was planned for. So there's already a, a, a short list of people that are coming this week. Well, and as you know, people get vaccinated, especially students, hopefully maybe the others will say, hey, mom, do I need to do this? And, you know, for the facts. Anybody else have anything? I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Signify by saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>